So you got your airbrush machine, now what? Let's explain a little bit about how the airbrush machine works. Parts, this is your compressor, this is your gun, this is your air hose, here's your electrical supply, and on the cookie countess machine, here's your on off, and here's where you control your PSI. In other words, that's where you control the air pressure coming from your compressor to your gun. Now, let's look at the gun a little more closely. This is a single action gun. Most guns are single action. What this means is when you turn on your machine and you're gonna hear the noise, you can see it's vibrating just a tiny bit and I can feel, can you hear that? There's air coming out of the machine. Okay, so this is not broken. If you say, oh, there's air coming out of my machine. I just turned it on, but I haven't pressed anything yet. That's the way these work, okay? Nothing's gonna happen with the color until you play with this right here. And you hear that difference? If you have a dual action machine, nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna turn on your compressor, which is probably gonna be bigger and looks different than this in a lot of the brands. Nothing's gonna happen until you press down on this. That's gonna start the airflow and then you pull back. So that's a little different. We're not gonna to talk too much about that other than just to explain the difference, but that's a dual action gun. This is a single action gun. Most of your small compressor guns are gonna be single action. So again, we're gonna turn on right here on our cookie countess machine. This little dial here controls the PSI. So this is gonna control how much air is getting pushed through your gun. Now you can feel the difference. You wanna put your hand in front of this and play with the dial and you can feel the difference, okay? Now, when color goes in your color well, now let's see if we can zoom in on this. Can you see the needle inside there? And right now, you may not be able to tell, but what's happening right now is I am pulling the needle back and basically out of the way to allow color to come through. So let's gonna, I'm gonna take this off, this front part off for a second and just show it to you what's gonna happen here. So, can you see the tip of our needle right here? When I pull back, that needle's gonna back up out of the way. See that? So that is what's gonna allow your color to come out. See that move right there? So again, air is continually flowing, color comes in, doesn't come out until you pull back. And not only can you control how much color is coming out by how much you adjust this dial, it's also really dependent on how much do you pull back on this. Every time you pick up your gun does not mean you pull it back all the way. I almost never pull back mine all the way. And this may seem obvious to you, it may come as a surprise to you, but you really can control the air spray just by how much you pull back on this. So see when I pull back on this, that needle moves back just a little bit, just to allow a tiny bit of color to come out. So that's really where your control is coming from as well, not just the dial on the compressor coming up and down. It really has to do also with how much you pull back. So let me show you what that looks like with some color inside. All right, let's talk more about spraying out your color and controlling the color. So I've added some blue airbrush color in here. I'm using, for this example, Lux Blue, okay? So you can probably see I've got some color in there. I don't have it quite filled right to the top. You can fill it almost to the top without spilling usually. Uh, do whatever you're comfortable with. Now, when I turn on my gun, again, remember, no color is gonna come out. You can hear the air, but color is not gonna come out until I pull this back. So what you wanna do when you first get your airbrush is probably just practice playing with this on a paper towel. Just start pulling back just a little bit. See what it feels like. If I pull back a little, what does it look like? If I pull back a lot, what does that look like? So just get comfortable with the spray and how it sprays. Um, you can also play with this. So right now, this is on really low. If I pull this up all the way, you hear the difference in the motor, the air spray is stronger. So when I pull back just ever so slightly, 
I still, I can still control the color really well, but it's pushing the color out with more force to begin with. And one way I wanna show you how this does actually make a pretty big difference is if you have it on really low. Now our airbrush machine goes very low. It starts at five PSI. Some machines just have a low, medium, high. Um, some actually aren't even, uh, there is no variable speed on the machine. You're really just gonna control it through here. But what I wanna show you is if I turn this all the way down and I turn this on, now let me zoom in for one second here. If I pull back just a little bit, see how it's kind of um, pixelated or splattery? See how the color is a little bit, um, it's not a solid color, so there's not a lot of air pushing it. There's only a teeny bit of color coming out, right? Now if I pull back a lot, that fixes that and I get a stronger color. But if I really wanna control the color by only pulling back a little bit, but I don't want that, that splattery look, Turn your air pressure up, turn this air pressure up even higher, but still only just pull back a little bit. See the difference? See how it's not, it doesn't have that splattery look? So you really can control this. It may seem like there's one you know, lever and one button or one dial, but there really is a lot of control in the airbrushing. So again, when you get your airbrush system, Put some color in, even start with water. If the color makes you too nervous, start with water. Just see how it goes. See what happens when you go close. See what happens when you go far away. Aim down, aim sideways, just play with it. It's a new tool that like any, anything else, there's a learning curve, but the more you practice, the more comfortable you get with it. And again, see what the difference is when you pull back just a little bit or when you pull back all the way. It's gonna make a big difference in the results of your airbrushing and in the results of your stenciling. So have fun experimenting, play on a paper towel, roll out some fondant, cut it into fun shapes, pretend they're cookies. You don't have to go right for a cookie. If you don't know what you're doing, it'll make you nervous. You don't wanna feel like you're gonna ruin your cookies. Not a cookies are great for this, but definitely just practice and have some fun. All right, I think you're gonna love your airbrush machine. And the more you practice, the better you'll be at it.